Hello XL, you're watching Altec 2K Gaming. In this video, I'm going to show you how to defeat the Mastermind. You may also know her as Katrina, the Master of Undeath. What a lovely title. Now you may remember from my currency video that I spoke about this area being hit and miss, but when it is a hit, it delivers big. This league so far, I've made about 1.5x from this area alone, which is a large percentage of my total Exalted Orbs this league. Now this fight, whilst it does look hectic, it really boils down to three things that you need to know in order to survive. And I'll talk you through those, but I'll also talk you through some of the attacks, just so you know what's coming and what kind of damage she's dealing. Now this fight does feature my Onigoroshi Lacerate character, which I'll be releasing a build guide for in the coming weeks. So enough of me, I'm gonna go and disappear into the background and I'll talk you through the rest of the fight. Enjoy! The fight is broken down into three major phases. The first one we've just completed, the second one we're currently running. Do note that this area gives you 200% increased experience gain. So this area, providing you don't die in the last part of the fight, will give you some nice XP. This is the simplest phase of the fight with no real boss mechanics, you're just killing trash. When we get to the last phase of the fight, this phase is broken down into multiple sub-phases, so it takes quite a while. For your convenience, we've sped up this part of the fight to 1.5 times speed, and this is because it's the least mechanically challenging and so you don't need to concentrate very much on it. I'm running this at level 83, which is the maximum level that you can run this at. And for those of you who don't know, level 83 is the equivalent of a tier 16 map. And as we're reaching the last part of phase 2, let's talk about the portal, which we need to drop just before we enter the last fight. After all, who wants to do the walk of shame? Ooh, I know this one! Me! Me! Altex, shush. What you're seeing here is the start of the X-Circle attack. These four sides will expand out rapidly, dealing all physical damage. The damage from this attack is pretty low and so shouldn't give you many problems unless you've got no physical damage mitigation. This skull is lethal, physical and fire damage I believe which leads us nicely onto the first point on how we survive. Always, always, always try and be behind Katarina when she attacks. Most of her attacks go forwards with the occasional one going sideways. What we've just seen there is her release one of the safe house leaders. She will do this each time she gets down to a certain health level. These will come and attack you along with some adds. Then nothing to worry about. Once you utterly annihilate the first safe house leader, you'll see this flame appearing from the centre of the arena. This does tend to go around in sequence, firing outwards. You do not want to be in the alley when this fires as it does a massive amount of physical and fire damage. Oh, that was tip number two, by the way. You'll notice now that we've lost one quarter of the arena. Basically, when she stops taking damage, you need to go to the area that's currently highlighted, run inside it until it goes black, and then get out as quickly as possible because there's now a dot on the floor which will kill you. This of course means that the fight gets progressively harder the further we go on. At the end of the fight, all four quarters will be inaccessible. You'll see that the second quarter at our right just flashed. That means that as soon as we phase her, it's going to be ready to turn evil. And what I mean by that is inaccessible. Now as we continue through the fight, all of her other attacks, with the exception of the big scythe that comes out as a semicircle in front of her, deal physical and fire damage. The scythe attack itself deals just physical damage. Providing your character has a decent amount of health, over 5,000, none of the other attacks on their own should be able to kill you with the exception of the skull attacks and that flame in the middle. Now we've talked about the main skull attack which does massive damage but there's also a load of skulls she places on the floor. These on their own don't do a lot of damage, however, they all start to converge on you after a certain point. When they converge on you they explode so you get massive amounts of overlapping damage which will kill you. The only way to survive this part of the fight is the moment the skulls appear, run over them all as quickly as possible. If you can, save a Quicksilver Flash Charge for this purpose. It is very, very important that you run over all the skulls to destroy them before they get to the phase of crawling towards you. And this is kind of counterintuitive to the fight. You don't expect this, you expect to want to stay away from them. It killed me so many times when I first started doing this fight. Please do not follow in my footsteps. With a 
dated, intoxicated, we're automated and overpopulated. And she is down. Now you click on her little logo and Jun will kill her. We then walk to the side of the arena to one of the exits and go into the big treasure room where most of the loot will be. However, do not underestimate the loot that Katrina herself drops. There are some flasks that are very, very nice. Cinder Swallow Urns, I think they're called. They're not as powerful as previous leagues, but as far as flasks goes, they're still pretty good. And also, she now can drop the Cane of Kulamak. This can be incredibly lucrative if you roll it right. This is how I made at least one of my eggs from this encounter. And in previous leagues, in a single instance, I dropped 8 mirror shards, which netted me about 47x. I hope you found this video useful, and with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.